Executive Order No. 10 of 2020 for the implementation of financial autonomy of state legislature and state judiciary. Dr. Umar Gwandu, Special Assistant to the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice and Media and Public Relations, disclosed this on Friday in Abuja. Gwandu noted that the implementation of financial autonomy of the state legislature and state judiciary will strengthen the institutions at the tire of the government and make them more independent and accountable. This would be in line with the tenets of democracy as enshrined to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. And joining us for a quick review of the executive order is legal practitioner Anir Khan Akman from Akwa Ibom State. Good afternoon, Mr. Akman. Yeah, good afternoon. Good to have you. Now, do explain in, you know, in layman terms the relevance of this new executive order by Mr. President. Okay, um, it's a very simple one, really. Uh, the executive order is just meant to give effect to uh, what we already have in the Constitution, but which uh, many states are uh, observing in the breach. Uh, and that constitutional provision is uh, Section 121, Sub 3 of the Constitution, which just just says that uh, every money due to the judiciary should be paid directly to the heads of the courts. Uh, uh, and not the situation we have in many states where um, the heads of the courts, the chief judges, have to go uh, cap in hand periodically to the heads of the executives for release of funds. So what the president by this executive order has done is to enforce that um, constitutional provision by directing that monies due to state courts should be deducted at source and paid directly to the heads of the courts. Mm -hmm. And that brings me to my next question, which is how, implementa how implementable is it really for the Accountant General of the Federation to deduct from source amount uh, due to state legislature and judiciaries from the monthly allocation to each state for states that refuse to grant uh, such autonomy? Yeah, there's always um, room for details. Now, what, what, what the difference now is that by... And by by bringing up this uh, executive order, the president has merely fulfilled his own constitutional obligation of enforcing the provisions of the constitution. Now, he is acting under section five of the constitution. Now, if you look at that section, it, 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 it empowers the president to enforce uh, provisions of the Constitution, acts of the National Assembly and all that. Now, in the same Constitution, you find where uh, the state governors in uh, uh, Section 5.3 of the Constitution are under a duty not to prejudice the exercise of his executive powers of the federation, meaning that as it stands now with the executive order, the governors are under obligation not to impede it. The governors are under obligation not to uh, uh, stand in the way of the implementation of that executive order. And I think it's, it's going to be a novel test case where uh, let's see how the accountant general of the federation is going to put this um, order into effect. I think it's uh, something worthy of implementation. Okay. Now, will this reduce the controversy around cases of gifts to judiciary like we saw in Imo State recently uh, that raised eyebrows on the possible effects that might, uh, that might have on decisions of the court? Yes, I think it will totally eliminate that. I'll tell you something. Up till now, um, in the judiciary, if judges must have cards, um, um, it has to be given, given by the state governors. But it doesn't need to be so. It's not like that at the federal level. And that is because the judiciary at the federal level gets its funding directly. And so the heads of courts determine what to do with their monies. 
determine whether the judiciary needs cars, determines whether the judiciary needs uh, structures, buildings, infrastructure. It's not like it would be it would be absurd for the chief justice of Nigeria to go to the president uh, to ask for cars for Supreme Court justices or for Court of Appeal justices. I think we, we, we look forward to having that kind of situation in the states where the chief judge of a state would buy cars for his judicial officers, would buy cars for judges, for magistrates, and not have to wait for those cars to come from the executive in a manner that suggests uh, subservience. Because the governors make a big show of it. Uh, make it look like they are doing the the, the, the the courts, the judiciary, the judges a favor. Uh, it doesn't need to be so. And I'm happy that uh, this is about to put that to end. To an end. All right. Before I let you go, uh, what could be the likely drawbacks with this order, if any at all? <sighs> well, I, I, I don't foresee any constitutional drawback except that. Um, you now have many more accounting points. You know, whereas only the governor uh, was entitled to account for funds that come into the state, now you will have the, the, the chief judges being the heads of the, the judiciary also having to account. I think that's just about the only uh, innovation we're going to see. Mr. Aniakan uh, Akwan, thank you so very much for your time and sharing your thoughts with us on News on the R. Thank you, too.